And we are live. Welcome to the process. It is Friday, the 13th of January. That feels ominous in some way. I am Josh Engelman. I'm here to break down a nine game NBA slate coming off of last night's kind of gross uh, six gamer. A uh, lot of uninteresting chalk. Jason Tatum was bad. Uh, 1.06 FanDuel points per minute. Not ideal. Kyrie Irving in his first game without Kevin Durant. 1.04 FanDuel points per minute. Not ideal. It's weird to say that Luka was a bit of a bust at 72 FanDuel points because he played 52 and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb so 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 dumb crazy to think about how that actually was not a very good game shout out to Shea Gilgis Alexander for being the best play yesterday uh Joel Embiid fantastic in 27 minutes where we obviously saw the Oklahoma City Thunder beat the shit out of the Sixers I don't understand the Thunder at all but um we got to give them more credit moving forward they're, they're just better than we think they are. Uh, ben Simmons managed to have a very interesting game where he scored pretty well in 26 minutes. 37 fantasy points, 1.4 FanDuel points per minute, but uh, also not exactly offensively oriented. Lots of assists, though. Good for Ben Simmons. Evan Mobley with the big day. Um, not too much else to add there. Scotty Barnes was good. Um, makes me happy to see that sometimes, even though it's weird. I like Scotty Barnes in DFS. I don't like him in real life. I don't have a lot of guys that are like that. Uh, Dame went out and dropped 50 real points. That was something to see. That's all I got, though. Friday the 13th, folks. Feels weird today. Not really. This, I wasn't looking forward to a Friday the 13th. I don't believe in any of that nonsense. But it feels weird for me today. I don't like it. I really, really, really don't like it. Uh, Dr. DFS says, SGA and Giddy are the oddest one, too. I mean... Are we going to call Giddy the second best player on that team? I got a hard time thinking that it's Giddy. I don't, I don't like Josh Giddy. So uh, I'm gonna have I'm not gonna be the guy that says that Giddy is the two there. Yeah, uh, S and P. Thank you. That's a that's a that's the better way to put it. Yeah, SGA is like an A, like multiple A's. He's the A and the B. But I, per <laughs> you guys really want to see some ridiculous shit that everybody's gonna disagree with? I'm gonna pull it up on the screen right now. Before we get started, because I got an extra minute or two today. So this is the Darko projections. Um, SGA, obviously, the number one player on the Thunder. Mike Muscala would be two. Isaiah Joe, three. And then the one that I was ex sort of expecting to show up at two was Kenrich Williams. Oh, wow, I got porn bots. Give me a second. Uh, boom. Let's see if we can get those porn bots out of here. Big Friday the 13th fans. There we go. But yeah, anyway, back to Darko. Muscala, Isaiah Joe, Kenrich Williams, Lindy Waters, JRE, Chet ranking better than uh, Giddy even having not ever played in the NBA. Um, if we want to really get into it, I can show everybody for the team. Jalen Williams with a Y at the ass end. Darius Baisley, very close. Josh Giddy, the third worst thunder, thunder player, at least as of right now, um, has been getting a lot better. Uh, you can see his, you know, he's up... A couple tenths of a point since the middle of this season. And look, he's young. Uh, he's just really, really bad defensively. And I don't really think that that's going to get fixed at all. 
There's a role for him in the NBA, but not going to be what you would expect it to be. But as we look at it, though, I mean, he was over the past, like, I don't know, half of the, whatever, 15 games or so. He's He's gotten better. He's never been good. Never been good. Sorry to do that to you, Josh Giddy. Uh, us Josh should, should stick together. Uh, I didn't, however, stick together with you. Anyway, let's get into this one for today. Lots to talk about. Nine games to get through. Hard out at the top of the hour for 8 o'clock, not 7 o'clock. That would be insane. Um, I got to get out of here at 8. Uh, moving forward, we're not going to have that hard out. Not that it's really going to matter, but uh, I'm moving my gym time around on Fridays to 11 o'clock, so I won't have to worry about it as much. But let's just get into it. I'm ready to talk. I got my mocha creamer back as of yesterday. That makes me oh so happy. I still had some vanilla left, but I felt like it's Friday. I think that I should treat myself to a mocha. So, I've got my coffee. I hope you guys do as well. If you've got a tea or a water, that's fine. You're celebrating with something different this morning. If you got a crunch wrap to round out your work week, I can't complain with it. But rise and grind, everybody. It's right there. Cheers. Let's get it started. Oh, that is so good. That is so, so, so good. By the way, BetMGM banner at the top of the screen. BetMGM banner at the bottom of the screen. We will talk about them in a little bit, but uh, two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum. Not the worst deal in the world. I also want to make note of this. I got to see if it's in the description, because if it's not, I got to get it added. I don't even know how the hell to see the description quickly. Is it here? Uh, It is. Okay, fantastic. So, guys, I I haven't talked about this on this show, but I think this is the perfect show for it. And and for the people that are here, most of you... um, Most of you know this already, but if you've never signed up at Stochastic before, we have a five-day free trial going on. Now, if you're watching this, I assume you are very interested in the NBA. The trial would be for the NBA, but you would get everything we have to offer in our NBA package for five days. Our projections, our ownership projections, the boom bust tool. You hear us talk about that stuff all the time. We've got our player compare tool. So you can check all of the 1v1s, any questions you would have asked. Like, oh, should I play Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson? Plug the names into our, our uh, player compare tool. You'll get an answer immediately. Or you can do two V2s. We also have our new lineup generator. If you're a smaller amount of lineups player, if you don't, if you're not using Fantasy Cruncher at all, our lineup generator can generate 20 lineups for you. We create this gigantic pool of lineups. We get rid of all of the ones that we think just suck, and we allow you to basically flip through them like it's Tinder. Yeah, if you like that one, you could save it. If you don't, send it away. If you like 85% of that lineup and you want to swap one guy out, you can do that and then save that lineup. Import them directly into FanDuel or DraftKings. We got a lot going on right now. Five days free of the NBA package. The link is in the description. I highly recommend you guys go check it out. And now I don't really want to scroll back for this, but I, I definitely have to. Uh, where did it go? Justin, um, I don't want to put that up on the screen, but uh, I see what you said. I'm so sorry to hear that. I That is obviously incredibly uh, relatable to me right now. Um, uh, I, I don't have any words that are going to really help. It sucks. <laughs> There's no... There's no special speech or things that I can say that are going to make that any better. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. I I wish that there was something better that I can say or better that I can do. Uh, Just know I I understand how you feel. Every day gets incrementally better. Some days are going to suck more than others. But uh, talk to somebody if you need to. I highly recommend 
finding a therapist, it will help you out tremendously. Um, eight game, thank you. You guys say that I'm is that legit? Am I freezing every second or two? Is that real? I mean, there's nothing that I can do about it now, but good to know in the future. Anyway, let's get into this bad boy. Switch up the screens. Not that one. This one. Here we go. Game number one. Interesting. It's kind of weird. I'll have to check it out. I don't know what that what would be causing that. Not sure. Not sure. New Orleans Pelicans are four and a half point favorites in Detroit. 232 total for the Pels. No Brandon Ingram, no Zion Williamson. Uh, Herb Jones is questionable, so I guess we got to get him back in. Should be easy enough. Pretty easy fix, I reckon. Uh, let's move that thing down here. Stretch that back out. All right, so we need to get Herb Jones in for a little bit more. I'm going to take... Larry Nance down two more minutes. Jackson Hayes can stay in at 16. Trey Murphy in for 28. 33 for Najee Marshall. Oh, 32. Alvarado should be 23. I definitely don't need that minute coming in. CJ in for 35. Right, that leaves me enough time for Dyson Daniels and Herb Jones. Herb Jones probably playing about 28 minutes. And 15 for Daniels. Nice. Barely have to make any changes. All of the rates are still the same um, because there's no, nothing's really changing with uh, Zion and Brandon Ingram out. We've got the big boost for CJ. Minutes all look fine to me. Maybe I have uh, Jackson Hayes slightly over projected. I don't think that that matters. I am going to take another sip of coffee because I want it. Mm. So damn good. All right, next up. We'll go to Detroit. It's... I hope this is just easy. I have no idea if it's going to be or not. No Jalen Duran. No Marvin Bagley. Q tag on Isaiah Stewart. Everybody else available. So, I actually do think that this should be relatively easy. Because we have to project Stewart in. And by projecting Stewart in, it, it really does stabilize this entire team. So... B. Stu plays about 30 minutes a game. And then we have to assume that Nerlens Noel is just going to be the straight backup. Um, wild that he only played 20 minutes in both games, but we know that he can play 20 minutes then. So we right away, we get Isaiah Stewart, correct. We can then go to Killian Hayes, who's been playing like 32 minutes a game. That feels perfectly acceptable to me. We get Jaden Ivey in for the, I don't know, 29 that he seems to play every game. We get Boyan Bogdanovich in for uh, his standard issue rotation. Nothing too crazy for him either. Uh, so we'll say Boyan in for 32. And then I think Sadiq Bey is just back in just standard issue. He's in the starting lineup now. Uh, I'm going to get him in for 30 minutes. So the rest of this should actually hash itself out pretty easily. Alec Burks is going to play somewhere in the name, number, neighborhood of 22 minutes. Amadou Diallo is going to play somewhere in the neighborhood of 22 minutes. That leaves me 25 more minutes. That could be Kevin Knox, Isaiah Livers. I'm actually going to make it both of those guys. So we're going to go Livers for 16. Knox for 9. Something like that. Um, yeah, because Knox wasn't total blowout run. Yeah, that works for me. No changes to make for rates. We already had Boyan in. Uh, nobody else really affects anything. So game number one is in the books. Yeah, SMP, I, I like that thought process. 
And I think he looks good enough even at like 29 minutes uh, just because of the usage. Pistons look solid. Look, there's just not a lot of separation between Boyan, Hayes, Stewart, Bay, and Ivy. Like, I just can't... I can't really sift through that. I think Killian Hayes is probably my preferred guy. If I give too many more minutes to Jade and Ivy, it's a problem. Um, but even at 29, he's a really, really nice point per dollar play. Basically the best point per dollar play on the Pistons. Beast Stu having power forward is also interesting if he plays. I just like the Pistons. It's Their price tags are really valuable for today. Not as valuable on FanDuel. I think Sadiq Bey is probably my preferred guy. Maybe Jaden and Ivy if you think the minutes are there. And then on the Pelicans end... Joe Val, 6,500, stands out the most. Um, no real priorities otherwise. Nobody else gets up over 20%. Boom. 9,100 for point guard, shooting guard, CJ McCollum on FanDuel is probably the best piece that you can get on FanDuel. Game one in. Game two. Atlanta Hawks, three-point favorites in Indiana, 228 total. I mean, I know Indiana is going to be a chore. Uh, Trey Young should be back. This should be a pretty quick fix. So let's go ahead and get Atlanta updated. We'll get Trey Young in for his 35. We'll get DeJounte Murray in for his 37. We will get Onyeka Okongwu in for his 33. Minsky playing the backup center run, which is annoying. Which means John Collins is going to be set for like 32 minutes. Eight game. Congrats on getting wood on your back. Uh, Jalen Johnson basically just going to play the backup four minutes. See if I need to make a change for that. Uh, probably do. It'll probably be Hunter. Hunter is going to go to 35. Boyan Bogdanovich is going to go to 31. Gives me six for Aaron Holiday. Which does make me feel like I could drop two more down from Jalen Johnson, bump up Holiday to eight, call it a day. New rates. We know we need to pull standard issue rates. For the Hawks. Now, obviously, we have uh, Trey Young back. All right, so we're going to say games where Collins started, Trey started, Murray started, Hunter started. I don't really care which center is in. Eight game, that'll work. All right. They've played so many minutes with this foursome together at this point. So, it's crazy because Bogdanovich just hasn't. Not that it matters. Uh, Bogdanovich, 229 minutes with those other guys starting. 19% uh, usage rate. Kind of crazy to me. I guess it's not too crazy. Let's just start with Trey. He goes in for 33 Onyeko Okongwu, um, I'm just going to let go. DeJounte Murray goes in for 25. No, 20. Yeah, I'm going to stay 25. Uh, Hunter is at 19.3. John Collins is at 16 and a half. That is just insane to me. Bogdanovich is just comes down to where you need it to come down to. Okongwu's is fine as well. Assist rates. Ooh, wrong search. There we go. Trey Young. Perfect. John Collins, not that guy. DeJounte Murray. Lower. Hunter, not that guy. Bogdan Bogdanovich, not that guy. 
Rebounding rates, I'm not going to change. So Atlanta is done. But now we got to look at Indiana. Unfortunately for Indiana, and this one is really a bummer. Um, Tyrese Halliburton looking like he's going to be out for two, three weeks. Aaron Neesmith is questionable. Miles Turner is questionable. O'Shea Brissett is questionable. There is not a lot that we can do here for Indiana. Assuming we get like... Nemhard, Heald, Neesmith, Jalen Smith, Miles Turner, something like that. Because we saw, we saw Jalen Smith get the start on Wednesday. But then again, that was without Miles Turner. I don't, I am not going to, I'm not going to enjoy projecting Indiana right now. We're not going to go too hard into this just because three Q tags and their best player being out is a lot of question marks. We're going to get this information before lock. So right away, we're going to go in 31 minutes to Miles Turner. And then I am going to assume Jalen Smith goes straight to his backup role again. Um, that just seems like the more likely scenario. Um, I need look at their stats so if i run this with just tyrese halliburton off i need to get an idea of how this is going to break down it's not like he's been off a lot clearly tj mcconnell is going to be able to fall into more minutes i don't think he's going to start He's just going to have some more playing time. So I'm going to go to 24 on TJ McConnell pretty quickly. I reckon Andrew Nemhard is going to be the guy that really benefits. Uh, I'm going to go to 34 minutes on Nemhard. Although that does feel a little high. I think it's just what's going to be happening here. Um, We're going to get... Buddy healed. Actually, let's get Neesmith in for his. I'm going to say 28. We're going to get Buddy healed in for his 32. I'm going to make it a 33. You always want to give an extra minute. Uh, who else are we missing? Matherin is going to need his 28. O'Shea Brissett, probably something in that like 18 to 20 range. Let's just go 18 for now. Duarte is going to play a little bit more. I'm going to put him in for 16. Now I have 11 minutes left over. For who? Nobody obvious. Um, do I think they just go to a nine man rotation? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, they had been playing a 10 man rotation, so who am I missing? They don't really have that kind of body to fill in. Hmm, maybe Neesmith plays another minute here, although being questionable doesn't exactly help me. Nemhard, Matherin, Nemhard, Heald, Neesmith, Jalen Smith. Is it Jalen Smith that gets more? I'm going to go 29 to Neesmith. That just feels right. I have. I don't know where these 10 minutes need to go. There's just not a natural place. Is it Terry Taylor? No, it's not going to be Terry Taylor. He barely played on Wednesday. I don't think it's James Johnson. Like, it's not Goga. It's not Isaiah Jackson. They just don't really have that guy. I think I'm just going to throw these minutes on, like, random people for right now because I just don't have a great feel for it. So I'm just going to throw five on James Johnson, five on Isaiah Jackson so nobody pops up. Now, we can look at this. Benedict Matherin's played the most minutes with no Halliburton on. 
Um, but I would have expected Nemhard to get like a really big boost. Benedict Matherin, in the 573 minutes that he's played with no Tyrese Halliburton, has a 30% usage rate. So I'm just going to start with Matherin. I'm not going to go to 30. I'm going to go to 29, but he's going to see a nice boost. I just don't think it's going to matter. Miles Turner has only played 147 minutes without Tyrese Halliburton. These two guys have been glued to each other. Uh, so we do see Turner get a bit of a boost when he's not out there. I, I can't give a center that big of a boost. It's not like he's creating his own stuff. TJ McConnell is just himself always. Buddy healed 231 minutes without Halliburton on the floor. 21.5% usage rate, so he's just himself. Nemhard just does not take the same jump that I would have expected. It goes up, but not crazily. And then Aaron Neesmith, 254 minutes with no Halliburton. Uh, his actual, his usage rate actually has gone down. I don't want to give him too big of a discount. The, the interesting thing is, it's not as if Halliburton is a big usage guy. Now, from an assist perspective, this is where we should see some major rate changes. McConnell, even more so than normal, is going to get some assists. Um, Andrew Nemhard in 296 minutes, 9% of his possessions are assisted by him. Massive bump. He's normally at 6.4. So Nemhard getting the assists is where we really see it change. And we kind of know that already. Uh, Neesmith doesn't really do anything different. Benedict Matherin, you would expect to do something different, doesn't. And then Buddy Heald, uh, not really his cup of tea either. Rebounding, I can't ma imagine, matters too much. Uh, Miles Turner is still the same guy. Not really where you would expect to see those changes. So that's Indiana. Now, as we look at it, we should not be surprised to see Andrew Nemhard is going to be probably... Uh, look, we're in game number two. Nemhard is going to be an exceptional play today. Uh, massive boom, 4,300 on DraftKings. I got him projected for 31.3 fantasy points. That's a seven over 7x right out of the gate. 49% boom. Um, Miles Turner, if he plays, 6,900 works for me. 7,900 on FanDuel. Um, Matherin just looks better. TJ McConnell is good enough. Basically, any one of the main six guys, Nemhard, Heald, Turner, Neesmith, Matherin, McConnell, all very good options on DraftKings. Uh, Heald and Neesmith would be my two least favorite, although at least Heald has shooting guard small forward. On the FanDuel end, it's Nemhard once again. He's $1,000 more expensive on FanDuel. Still looks like a great play. Miles Turner is $1,000 more expensive on FanDuel, but to me, still looks like a good play. And then I think you can get a little bit of Buddy Heald, whose price is pretty normal. I don't have a ton of interest in Neesmith, Matherin, or TJ McConnell on FanDuel. Now for Atlanta, with Trey Young back, not much to like here. Okongwu looks good, but we're going to see 100 centers like we normally do. Um... DeJounte Murray is fine on both sites. If you ever want to get to Trey Young, by all means. The Atlanta side isn't all that appealing. This is an Indiana side for sure. New York Knicks. Four-point favorites in Washington. 224 total. Uh, for New York, what do we got? Uh, just four. Fully healthy, standard New York Knicks rotation. I don't think that I really have any changes that I need to make here. I guess I need to bump up Mitchell Robinson's minutes. I'm going to take him to 32 now. They don't appear to be playing Jericho Sims, really, at this point. Got 37 in for Randall. Feels pretty safe. I'm going to make it 38. Go to 10 on Toppin. 36 for Grimes. Actually going to make the 35. 
RJ Barrett came right back and played 41 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to just get RJ Barrett in for 36 straight away. Quickly saw his minutes reduced quite a bit. They came down pretty quickly. 36 for Brunson. I mean, he still played 40. Um, I guess I'm going to go back up to 37 for Brunson. There's a decent chance the Knicks look good here. Let's look at the Washington end. The Knicks rotation is easy. Just starters. Just aggressively play the starters. For the Wiz, yeah, like this is just a disaster. Q tag on Monty Morris, Chris Stapps, Porzingis, Daniel Gafford. Hard to really know what we can do here. So we just have to project Washington as normal. The only guy that we know is out is Beal. So we just have to project this team like they normally look. Um, so that's going to be Monty Morris in for 28 minutes. DeLon Wright in for 20. Did I put an OT? No. So when they had no Gafford, no Porzingis, they were they did go to DeLon Wright and Monty Morris alongside of each other. They don't normally do that. Uh, assuming Gafford is in and is just going to play his like standard 25 minutes, we'll pop that in. We'll get Chris Stapps Porzingis in for his 32. Um, we need to get Kyle Kuzma his minutes. I kind of feel like Taj Gibson's going to play because he normally plays. So I'm going to give Rui his 24 minutes. I'm going to get Kuzma in for his 34 minutes. We're going to get Kispert in for 29. Benny goes in for 25. Yeah, that works. That leaves me 23 more minutes for Jordan Goodwin and what my assumption is, is at least a little bit of Taj Gibson. So I'm going to give Taj 10 minutes. Yuck, by the way. And I'll give Jordan Goodwin 13. That will be my Wizards rotation. Got to grab new rates because they had no Porzingis. This is a quick one because we've been projecting this team like this. Obviously, a ton of news coming up. Fidel, good to have you, man. So we take Bradley Beal off in games where Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and Kyle Kuzma both played. And we grab some usage rates. Kyle Kuzma with no Bradley Beal has a 29.5% usage rate. Chris Stamps Porzingis with no Bradley Beal, 29.5% usage rate. Monty Morris is himself. Any Avdia is himself. And Daniel Gafford is himself, basically. This rate could be interesting. I don't remember if any of that changes. Yeah, Morris doesn't move. Porzingis doesn't move. Kuzma doesn't move. Does Denny? Denny's actually doesn't move. So nothing interesting there. Rebounding. Porzingis is set. Kuzma is set. Gafford is set. So I don't have anything else to change here for Washington, which means if everybody plays for the Wizards today, we're not going to the Wizards. Everybody looks bad. Kuzma's price came up a little bit on FanDuel. If you want to play Kuzma or Porzingis on FanDuel, they would be the only two guys that I would have any interest in.
Um, they just this entire Wizards team doesn't look good. Not a great matchup against the Knicks either. On the Knicks end, uh, it's Mitchell Robinson is I don't want to say the priority because it's center and there's a million of them. But if I'm going anywhere, Mitchell Robinson is the guy that I want to look at first. Everybody else is kind of the same. I don't really have a preference between anybody here. RJ Barrett, FanDuel 7200, probably my preferred option of anything that I see. But a game that I would rather just basically cross off. Game number four, the Golden State Warriors are eight-point favorites in San Antonio, 240 total. Um, and this is going to be the big one, right? This is the, the record breaker for attendance. I think. All right, Warriors. And I think they were at full strength the last time they played. So I actually don't think that we have to make any real changes to the Golden State rotation. I got Steph in for 32 that feels pretty safe for right now. Jordan Poole in for 30. Feels pretty safe. Uh, 34 for Clay. You know, Ty Jerome plays a little bit. Iggy plays a little bit. I feel fine for DiVincenzo. I got Wiggins in for 30. That feels about right. 32 for Draymond. 24 for Looney. I don't have any changes to make for Golden State. Josh, I don't have one. The Mavs, I guess... I was a big Dirk fan, but I don't cheer for any basketball teams. I don't really cheer for any sports teams other than Liverpool. All of my fandom went away with this job. On the Spurs end. No Devin Vassell, otherwise full strength. Which is actually how I have this projected. Uh, Keldon Johnson came back after missing two days, played 35 minutes. Uh, feels like I should at least go to 32 on him. Um, 28 to Jeremy Sohan. 27 to Jakob Pertl. I don't really have anything that I really want to move around. 25 for Romeo Langford could in theory be a bit too high. 23 for Jay Rich feels fine. Don't really know what to do with those Stanley Johnson minutes. Won't matter. Everything stays the same for San Antonio. That's a really easy game to project. So I like these guys on Wednesday. Uh, no matter what uh, dude said in chat that we were trying to talk people off of San Antonio... I liked Keldon Johnson and Trey Jones on Wednesday, and I made that very clear. Um, they both look really good today. I think Jakob Pertl looks really good. It's a pace-up spot for San Antonio, so if this game can stay competitive, I think Keldon Johnson, Trey Jones, and Jakob Pertl are all really good plays today. 6800 for Keldon Johnson is just not the right price. He's a little over a fantasy point per minute guy in this spot. Trey Jones is that guy as well. I don't really want too much from San Antonio, but Johnson, Trey Jones, and Jakob Pertl look good to me. Not much else, though. Golden State, don't play anybody. Um, if you want to go to $9,300 Curry on FanDuel, that's a price tag that makes sense. $6,200 for Draymond, power forward center is also fine. On DraftKings, though, you're not playing anybody from the Warriors. Not with any sort of priority. All right, OKC on a back-to-back, -back, taking on the Bulls, 228 total. I mean, I never know what Oklahoma City is going to do when they don't have a back-to-back. -back. Uh, I'm not touching this rotation unless we know something very specific. Whatever I had in for yesterday is what's moving forward here. Wow, 38 minutes from Dort yesterday. That's something. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not adjusting any of this. SMP. That's the one that I want for sure. That would be the preferred option. Let's look at it. Because I tweeted this out a couple days ago and I want to talk about it again. So if we look at the projected order of the draft. So right now Phoenix is no longer in the lottery, um, which is kind of a bummer. If I look at this, 
I would want Wembeyama to go to either New Orleans and hope that they can move to Seattle or Toronto. I think going to Toronto would be amazing. I would I would almost become a Toronto fan. They would be so good. Especially because they would have the ability to do like they have picks and young talent. They can move some stuff around and go get somebody else too. Give me Toronto. I'm, I'm going to say Toronto would be my number one choice. If New Orleans wasn't in New Orleans, they would be one. But it's just such a shitty market. So Toronto won for me, New Orleans two. And then, honestly, OKC three. They would be my three biggest, most interesting teams to get Wemby. If Dame were younger, I'd be interested with Portland. I don't want him to go to Houston. I don't want him to go to Charlotte. I don't want him to go to the Pistons. Although there's a path for the Pistons to be interesting. I definitely don't want him to go to San Antonio. Orlando could be fun because I like Franz Wagner and I like Paolo. And that would be a really fun trio. I definitely don't want him to go to the Wizards. Orlando having two shots at it is kind of interesting, thanks to the Bulls. Oh, no, they don't. Uh, Bulls keep that pick top four, so never mind there. Um, Atlanta, I don't want to see that. I don't want to reward, reward Trey Young. Utah getting it with the Minnesota pick would be fun, though. That, that would be interesting. Utah getting it with the Minnesota pick. Obviously, the Pelicans getting it and the Lakers losing out on it is just absolute hilarity. Josh, yes. Yes. I mean, star is relative. Like, he's going to be... He's going to be exceptional right out of the gate. Because at the very least, he's going to get his shot off anywhere. He, like, he's got he's got a smooth stroke, and it, it's going to come from anywhere on the floor. Like, he's just... He'll probably be pretty bad defensively, just because he's just... It, it's a scheme thing. It takes a while to learn the NBA. But offensively, he's going to be a real problem. All right, OKC, I'm leaving, like I said, I'm leaving the same rotation here. You know, we got Baisley over Wiggins. I think that flip-flops today. Uh, it's just not worth fixing right now. I'm going to give Dort one extra minute. And I think I'm going to give Giddy one extra minute as well. But none of this matters. Ooh, SMP, I... Um, uh, we are not on the same page there. I feel like we might have talked about that already, but uh, I think you're you're too quick. You're too quick on Paolo. He's too big. You don't normally see 28% usage rookies that are, you know, 6'10". 54% true shooting for the Magic is actually shockingly high. Like, I'm not surprised that he's shooting 31% from three. Close to league average from at the rim. It, it's, you know, 18% usage rate. That's 73% or 73rd percentile. I think Paolo is really, really, really good. To be able to be functional and a plus in EPM as a rookie, like I think he's one of two rookies that are positive this year. He's going to be exceptional. What he learns defensively will be big. Like, and if he could play the five at all, you know, if he could be like, could he be the backup five in scenario? Sort of like what you would want John Collins to be able to be able to be. Just changes the way that you could build your team. And like when you don't have guards, Suggs, awful. Cole Anthony, not a guy you want running your offense. Markel Fultz, obviously a guy with warts now. Um, Wagner, Bancaro, and then if they can get, one, like if they can get Scoot, amazing if they can get Wemby obviously incredible 
uh, I'm very interested to see what the Magic are going to do, but I am I'm very bullish on on Ben Caro. Uh, am I doing a trade day show? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I don't ever miss that. I've been doing that for like four straight years. Trade deadline is Thursday, February 9th. Yeah, I you can guarantee I can guarantee that I will be on a show for hours. All right, Bulls. Let's keep this one moving. Doubtful tag on DeRozan. Levine is probable. So we're getting the same rotation that we got out of Chicago uh, on Wednesday. Saw Kobe White get 28 minutes. Sunmu played a comparable amount of minutes. Caruso played a little bit more. Goran Dragic did not get the same bump that I would have expected. Uh, I am going to give an extra minute to Levine. We'll take that from Dragic. Booch, I'm also going to give an extra minute. So we'll get him to 35. No other rates to change. I love the trade deadline, man. That's my favorite shit. Maybe I'll start thinking about doing some sort of like trade deadline prep. I'll get my value sheet built out so that we can really take a look at some things. Oh, the trade deadline is without quite my favorite day. That 24 hours leading up to the trade deadline is my favorite thing. All right, for the Bulls. Because I just killed too much time there. We're fine, though. Uh, the Bulls look great. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised about that, taking on OKC. Levine is one of the best plays you'll find on FanDuel, 8,600. Vooch looks really, really good. It's just, you know, there's just so much at center. I'm very happy to go to Desunmu or Kobe White. I think both of those guys look fine. Uh, very similar. Kobe White's flexibility and being 3,800 is appealing. Not the best per minute guy, but great spot against OKC. If you want to go to Patrick Williams, that looks fine. But I would say priorities, honestly, from DraftKings, Levine, Vooch, Desunmu, and Kobe White. They look really good. That's what happens when you play OKC. Speaking of OKC, uh, if you want to play Shea, always can do that. And hit that like button, by the way. Uh, what are we at? Yeah, 45 likes, 150 people. We're slacking. I don't ask enough on this show anymore. So hit that like button. Uh, Shay Giddy Dort. That's it. That's all we're doing on a day like today. Oh, the Phoenix Suns. I don't know what they look like today, but I, I assume it's bad. No crisp. Oh, okay. This is actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. These guys are just out. Yeah, Jen, not only did they cover the spread, they won by like 15, didn't they? <laughs> no Chris Paul, no Devin Booker, no Cam Johnson, no Landry Shamit, no Cam Payne. Uh, Q tag on DeAndre Ayton. I'm going to start this rotation from scratch again. Rates will all be able to stay the same, but... We're going to go ahead and get DeAndre Ayton in for 32 minutes. And then I'm going to say that Jock Landale is the backup. They do not like Dwayne Washington. Um, I'm going to say 27 minutes. I don't like it, though. I don't like it at all. Uh, Dario Saric, I'm going to go in for 28. Um... We're going to get Tory Craig in for 28. We're going to get Mikel Bridges in for 37. Um, let's see. Morning Biscuits. I think we could probably go to, you know, like 26 on Damian Lee. I think we probably get something in that like 24 range for Josh Akogi. In theory, that leaves me 22 minutes for Ish Wainwright, which is not what I want to do. So I'm, I do have some playing time that I can move around a little bit. Because I think Wainwright is probably more like an 18 guy. Leaves me four minutes. Oh, shit. Sabin Lee. Uh, that actually matters. So let me get Sabin Lee added. I don't think I have him on a roster. 
I do. Where the hell do I have him? Really? Didn't know that. Saban Lee is a complicating factor now because now he's played with the team and has been able to get a practice in. I won't be surprised if he starts. I mean that sincerely. I would not be surprised at all if Saban Lee starts today. Be ready for that, guys. Okay, so now... I mean, Saban Lee played 15... What 15 minutes did Saban Lee play that... Um, I mean, they got beat by 30. They played him... He picked up a foul. He played two minutes. And then he played the final 13 minutes of the game. But... That's just him getting time. I'm... Ooh, man, this is... Who do I think is the least likely to keep? Like, Ish Wainwright is going to get minimal minutes. Um. All right, I'm going to go 10 minutes Saban Lee, 12 Ish Wainwright. I don't have a great feel there, but we need to be very ready for what's going to happen. Oh yeah, when like when Chet is ready, like uh, okay, see, I, I really like Dagnall. We've had that conversation before for sure. Uh, I just need to quickly see what DeAndre Ayton's usage rate is without these guys. No Chris Paul, no Devin Booker, no campaign. Usage rate on. DeAndre Ayton in 96 minutes is 26%. I'm going to give him a bump. I think John DeAndre Ayton is about to look really, really good today. But we'll see in a second. They're taking on Minnesota, 224 total. On the Wolves side... Oh my god, all these Q tags today. Q tag on Edwards, Q tag on Kyle Anderson, Q tag on Torian Prince. Lucky for me, uh, I didn't play that Wednesday slate, so I never made these changes. So the rotation that I have in for Minnesota right now is what I actually want it to be. I don't have any changes here. Which means no real priorities coming from Minnesota. Anthony Edwards is a bit too expensive. He's okay. Gobert's okay. Russell's fine. No real priorities, though, from the Minnesota end. From Phoenix. I mean, Dwayne Washington... The problem with Dwayne Washington is just that he projects so ridiculously because of a 30-plus percent usage rate. I'm taking one of those minutes away and giving it to Saban Lee. I don't want him popping like that. I just don't think it's realistic. They don't seem to like him. And I honestly think Saban Lee could play 24 minutes tonight and really take a bite out of him. Now, that said, Dwayne Washington is still a really good play. He's 5K point guard, shooting guard. And even if he's coming off the bench playing 24 minutes, you don't get a lot of 24-minute guys with 30% usage rate. So I don't want people to overthink this because of what we've seen. It's not like he needs... If he plays 30 minutes, you're going to have to have him. There's basically no way around that. But he could still be very viable. Like, his boom is 35 fantasy points. He plays 26 minutes like he's been playing. That's 1.35 fantasy points per minute. That is not all that crazy. I mean, even if we just want to look at yesterday from a FanDuel perspective. If I just choose yesterday... And we look at greater than 1.35. We'll go 1.34. 13 guys hit that rate yesterday. Ricky Rubio did it off the bench. 
And then you're getting into like more of the stars. It is a it is sort of like uncharted territory. These are relatively high per minute guys. But they are sort of the types of guys that you know, like a lot of them are the 30% usage type guys. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And I don't really like anything else from Phoenix. Now, if Aiton ends up out, you probably go to one of the centers. And like Washington's 5,900 on FanDuel, that is not as appealing. I think Aiton is the best play on FanDuel at 7,700. All right, what else do we got here? Three games to go, 7.30, plenty of time. Orlando, six-point dogs in Utah, 233 total. Fun game. What do we got for the Magic? Q tag on Suggs, no Isaac, no Okiki. So I guess normal Orlando rotation? Wait, hold on. Has Bol Bol just not been playing now? Is that real? Did they just like rip him from the road. DNP CD for Bowl Bowl. What the fuck are the Magic doing? Look, I don't like Bowl Bowl. I want to be clear here. I don't find him all that interesting. I think he's more of a gimmick. But like, I mean, this is a dude with 66% true shooting this year and 39% from three. Like again, I don't think that he's anything spectacular, but he is. I don't. Why is he getting DMP CDs? Why are you like just? I just don't play Terrence Ross or Mo Wagner. Like, do I think Mo Wagner is better than him? Yeah, but like not by much. I don't even know if that's true. What's ha I don't understand. Why is Bull Bull getting DMP CDs? Two, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So, so nine man rotation. Man, that does not. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, the Bull Bull has no trade value, guys. That's that's not how I'm trying to say this. They're the magic. They have no reason to not be playing Bull Bull. Especially when it's not as if he's just been a tire fire while he's been out there. That's just, I don't, that just doesn't make any sense to me. My only assumption is that like he's back, but he's not like back back. Like his conditioning isn't really there and he's just on the bench for like breaking case of emergency. But I mean, this is a guy that was playing like 25 minutes a game. You don't normally see that person just lose all of those minutes to nobody. Anyway, I'm going to reproject this rotation, I guess. 30 minutes for Wendell Carter Jr. 18 for Mo Wagner as the backup. 33 for Paolo Bancaro. 33 for Franz Wagner. All looks good. 24 for Gary Harris. Sure. 29 for Fultz. I guess I don't really have too much. Where the hell do these minutes go then? This makes no sense to me. Where the hell do I give these 16 minutes? Like he's just like, there's a natural amount of playing time for him right now. I might actually project him in. Like, I think he's going to get back in the rotation. It makes no sense to me otherwise. I guess I'll bump up Gary Harris and take him to 26. He's Gary Harris, so that won't matter at all. I guess I got to get Fultz up to 30. But like, like if they're not going to play Bull Bull or Suggs, what are we doing here? And like, don't get me wrong. I think Suggs, Suggs, he has been ultra, ultra bad. But like, just stop playing Terrence Ross. Like, there's no reason that that man needs to be on the floor. Either trade his ass or bury him. 
Terrence Ross brings literally nothing to the table for this team. No usage, but well below average efficiency. He doesn't get assists. He doesn't get rebounds. Just take him off the fucking floor. I'm going to leave 13 minutes on Bull Bull. I, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. who. There's no individual that I can give them to right now. I, I, I mean, Caleb Houston, I guess? Four of them? Unbelievable. All righty. Uh, rates all stay the same. So that's Orlando. Uh, that uh, I was not ready for that. It had me second-guessing myself thinking he wasn't back. Look, it's again, it's not like I think Bull Bull is going to have some illustrious career. But to me, he's very clearly shown himself to be a guy that can play 16 minutes off the bench for the Orlando Magic. Like, utilize him. Oh, just, like, it just makes no sense. All right, Utah. No Kelly Olenek. Colin Sexton is back. Uh, that's actually a complicating factor here. So let's redo this rotation. We're going to get Mike Conley in for 30. We're going to get Colin Sexton, I assume, just in for like 22 minutes. First game back, I'm guessing. Yeah. That will let me get Jordan Clarkson in for his 32 Um, assuming we get Kessler for what, 26, 22 to Vandy. Maybe they do two minutes alongside of each other. Uh, Hannah, I mean, I would rather have Vanderbilt. And I, that, I say that as a guy that likes John Collins a lot, but. Although, you know, I mean, like. I'd rather just play Laurie Markinen at the four. That's that's really the issue. If, if I'm the Jazz and I'm going to play Walker Kessler at the five, I just want Laurie Markinen to be my four. And then I don't want John Collins. I'd rather have Vanderbilt as like a. Just a. Swiss Army Knife 4-5 guy. Uh, all right. The rest of these minutes. Rudy Gay, I assume, is going to be in for his, like, 14. We have no Linux. So we'll get Markinen in for 34. Five, and then Beasley probably for like 28. That leaves me 29 more minutes. Who am I missing? Oh, Akbaji now too. Akbaji goes in for his 17. That leaves me 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tenth guy going to be Walker? Twelve minutes. Perfect. That actually worked out exactly how I would like it to. Uh, I guess I need to change these rates for Colin Sexton. Or do I? No, I actually don't think that I do. So I think we're fine here. Uh, Beasley's still mildly interesting to me. Not by a lot. Walker Kessler, 5K on DraftKings. 5,600 on FanDuel. Very interesting to me. Not a lot here to like, though, for the Utah Jazz. On the Orlando side, I definitely don't like Bull Bull. Uh, Cole Anthony, I guess, is my probably my preferred option. No priorities. Uh, just mostly stay away from Utah Orlando. How's that? 
That seems like the easiest thing to do. Uh, Denver Nuggets, one and a half point dogs in LA against the Clippers. Now, I know Denver's got a lot of bullshit today. Q tag on Jokic. Bruce Brown in, Jamal Murray in. I mean, I think we have to assume that Nikola Jokic isn't playing today. Um, I'm clearly not projecting that, and I'm clearly not changing Denver's rotation at all. So we're just not going to pay attention to Denver. There's no way to do it. For the Clippers, I'm sure they're a pain in the ass. No Paul George, no Luke Kennard. Okay, so same rotation that we've been getting for the Clippers. That's actually helpful. Um, I didn't expect that. So I assume we're going to get the same rotation we've been getting. Uh, big minutes for Terrence Mann. Wow, he's playing even more than I thought he would. All right. I'm actually going to gut it just to redo it and make sure that I like see it correctly. So I'm going to go 34 to Terrence Mann. I'm going to maintain 28 minutes to Zubat. Reggie Jackson, straight DNP. Holy shit. Did this go to OT? Had to have, right? That's too many big numbers. No, it didn't. Oh, my God. John Wall in for, I'm going to say 20. I don't know why Moses Brown is playing a small amount of playing time. I'm going to assume that Robert Covington is the backup center. Marcus Morris is going to be in for his 29. Nick Batum appears to be in for 28. Kawhi Leonard is pretty clearly just back and playing 35 minutes a night. Norm Powell is playing 30 minutes a night, but I don't want to go to that degree either. So we're going to get Norm Powell in for 28. That leaves me 18 minutes. I'm out of bodies, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, they played eight dudes. Uh, this is very tricky. Because, like, we're not projecting Terrence Mann for 40 minutes. And I'm already giving Zubats more minutes. I, like, Covington and Zubats, I assume, didn't play alongside of each other for a second. Would that be right? So if that's the case, then it really narrows down the positionality. Uh, Zubats and Covington. So we're looking for green. Okay, so they did play alongside each other. They started the fourth quarter and played half of the fourth quarter together. So I guess I can give four more minutes to Robert Covington here. Maybe six more minutes to Robert Covington? That still only leaves me 12. I don't want to go higher than 28 for Batum. I don't want to go higher than 29 for Morris. 28 for Powell. I mean, I feel like I'm being cautious enough. I guess I could throw a couple extra minutes to Moses Brown. Did not play a ton, but seems to get like a rotation. Now that leaves me six more minutes. I'm just going to throw them to Amir Coffee because I don't have a great feel. Uh, rates can stay the same. Fascinating team. What do we see on the Clippers side? Whoo! Uh, play all the Terrence Mann. Uh, you don't have a choice. 4,300 on DraftKings. Unequivocal, fantastic play. Both sites. 4,800 on FanDuel too. Uh, no issue going to Kawhi, but he's probably appropriately priced. 9K on FanDuel is too cheap. If you think that Robert Covington is just a part of the rotation and playing big minutes now, he's a great play today. And I don't even have him projected all that well. 0.87 FanDuel points per minute. 
He's 3,300 power forward center on DK, 3,900 small forward power forward. So play a lot of Terrence Mann and Robert Covington. Mann is safe in that you assume he's starting and this is just normal. If you believe in the Robert Covington minutes to any degree, he played 31 on Tuesday. I'm giving him 26 and I think he's a really good play. If you think that he's playing 30, he's a lock. So that's where we're at for the Clippers. Final game, late night hammer. It's a big one. 10 point dogs for the Houston Rockets in Sacramento, 235 total. Houston, and guys, thank you for being here. Don't be afraid to hit that like button. 175 of you in here, 70 likes. Can we get up to 100, please? That would be great. Houston Rockets, no KPJ. So we do have that. Uh, assuming KJ Martin just steps in and they bump everybody down. I'm going to cut this entire rotation. Probably see some Ty Ty Washington now too. Maybe. Um, but let's get Houston done here. So we're going to move everybody down a peg. Jalen Green going to go right away in for 35. I'm going to maintain Eric Gordon in for 29. Martin's just going to pop right into a normal 28-minute roll. We get Jabari Smith in for his standard 28. And we get Shangun in for what I would consider to be his standard 28. Now, after that, we get mostly Bruno Fernando with a very small amount of Usman Garuba. So we're going to go Bruno Fernando... 14, Usman Garuba, 6. We get Jay Sean, we get Tari Eason in for 18. We get Jay Sean Tate in for 20. We get Garrison Matthews in for 18. That leaves me 16 additional minutes for either Knicks or... Oh, Ty Ty Washington's with the G League. So, Knicks. Easy. Easy stuff. Easy stuff. Washington's with the G League. Don't have to worry about it. Got a sneeze. Didn't think I was going to make it there. Um, I'll just throw those extra three minutes on Josh Christopher. It won't matter. Now, rates are actually going to matter a lot here. I assume KPJ not being on the floor is like a crazy trickle down. We don't see this all that often. So we're going to say Kevin Porter Jr. off in games where... Jalen Green starts. Shingun starts. And Jabari Smith starts. I don't care about Eric Gordon. I don't know if they want to rush Tate back yet. Wouldn't surprise me, but I wouldn't. Uh, I could see him wanting, they want to keep him on the second unit, actually. It seems easier to do that. But I don't have a great feel. I just don't know if they're ready to just... Like, he's playing 19 minutes a night for a reason right now. Okay, so... 224 minutes for Jalen Green with KPJ off normal starters. 32.5% usage rate. Alper and Shengun in 180 minutes. 21% usage rate. So he just stays the same. Turns out Eric Gordon does, in fact, get a giant bump in usage. 25.5% usage rate for Eric Gordon in 265 minutes when KPJ is off the floor. Be aware of that. Jabari Smith gets a pretty sizable bump as well. 
And then Kenyon Martin Jr. Uh, is just sort of like himself. Assist rates are going to change pretty dramatically here. Although, oddly enough, Jalen Green still not really great at uh, involving anyone else. Shangoon actually sees a little bit of a bump to the assist rate. Eric Gordon sees a massive bump to the assist rate. I think Eric Gordon's going to end up looking pretty good here. Especially against Sacramento. Honestly, I could see Jalen Green having a big day here. He's not going to meet a lot of resistance on the perimeter. And I think he's going to be good enough to get to the basket. And if you're ever going to get to the... like, And he's just going to have the ball more. If you're ever going to get to the basket, uh, getting to the basket against Sacramento is basically like the best team you can do that against because Sabonis might be the worst rim protector in the league. Uh, Q tag on Herder, otherwise everybody available. I still have Herder in, so I don't really have any changes that I want to make here for Sacramento. 36 minutes in for Sabonis, 36 minutes in for Fox. I'm going to make that 35. I got Herder in for 31 minutes. I'm okay with that. 33 for Harry B and 28 for Keegan Murray. I'm going to make that 29. Everything stays the same for Sacramento. So not a lot to like for Sacramento. Sabonis or Fox, both fine. Sabonis looking better on FanDuel because he gets the power forward eligibility. Uh, no major priorities here for Sacramento. If Herder ends up out, it could open things up a little bit more. But for right now, I think they're just good or Houston. Yeah. 7,600 for Jalen Green on DK. 7K on FanDuel. Very happy to pay both of those prices. Shingun on FanDuel for 6,400. Might be the best center we've looked at so far. Get yourself some Kenyon Martin. Get yourself some Jabari Smith. But the guy that I think you really need to get to today, at least on DraftKings, $3,900 Eric Gordon. He is not the same guy with KPJ out of there. Usage bump, assist rate bump. He's not the 0.65 fantasy point per minute guy that you normally see. He's going to be more like 0.8. He's the guy that, you know, real teams are going to want. This could be a coming out party, show out party for Eric Gordon to let everybody know, hey, by the way, you should trade for me and get me the hell out of here. Um, I love Eric Gordon today. I hope he goes underrepresented. I don't know if he will. But we are done, folks. We are done, which means it's time for us to run some crunches. Let's save this bad boy. We got to hustle. I got to get out of here in 10 minutes. Perfect timing, though. Appreciate you guys being here. Let's figure out what we've got for today. Eric Gordon on a winning, like on a good team is exactly what you're looking for. In that Danny Green-ish type role. He is very miscast in Houston. All right. First crunch. FanDuel Optimals. You know what? Before we get to FanDuel Optimals, let's talk a little bit about BetMGM. They are the sponsor of this video. You can get two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum, which is going to be like a 300-something dollar value. And some bonus bets up to $1,000. So the first bet that you put in, if it wins, you just move forward. If it loses, you get that amount back in bonus bets. You got to be 21 or over. If you got a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Um, you can get to my thing if you want to by scanning that QR code. I don't know how popular that's going to be, but that's fine. Um, two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum and first bet insurance up to $1,000. I think you guys should check that out for sure. Link is in the description, guys. Go check it out. All right, here we go. First crunch. Optimals. FanDuel. De'Aaron Fox, Andrew Nemhard, Jalen Green, Zach Levine, Terrence Mann, KJ Martin, Laurie Markinen, Keldon Johnson, and Jakob Pertl. Very balanced build. 324.92. Optimal lineup by 0.26. Power rankings. What 
What do we got for Fandle? Looking like it's going to be between Terrence Mann and Andrew Nemhard as the two best options. Jalen Green trying to make a battle for it as well. Looking like Nemhard is pulling away as your number one play. That shouldn't be all that surprising with Tyrese Halliburton out. So we're going to go Nemhard, Jalen Green, Terrence Mann, Zach Levine, Laurie Markkinen as your top five. Anthony Edwards, Robert Covington, Dasunmu, KJ Martin, and DeJounte Murray rounding out the rest of my top 10. We now move on to DraftKings. Final thing for the week before we take two days off to sleep in and not have to be up here at the ass crack of dawn. Although I will still be getting up early uh, tomorrow because I've got a Liverpool match to go watch. And then on Sunday... My final day of NFL coverage this season. Thank God. I'm so happy to set that one adrift. Optimal lineup on DraftKings. Trey Jones, Andrew Nemhard, Keldon Johnson, Isaiah Stewart, Jakob Pertl, Terrence Mann, Zach Levine, Jalen Green. That I feel like I could have built off the top of my head. 294.56. It's the optimal by 0.35. Power rankings. Oop, don't need to do that. Power rankings. All right, looks like Nemhard and Terrence Mann are going to be the two that pull away the most. Probably going to be Nemhard. It could go either way. It's very close right now. But they are the un unequivocal to me, two best options for you today in terms of just fitting in value. Uh, Josh, uh, Gerard for me. I loved Luis Suarez, but he's been gone long enough that it doesn't feel the same. But loved Suarez. Uh, I was a very big proponent of Van Dyke when he came in. But it's Stevie G. All right, Nemhard is the top guy on DraftKings. Terrence Mann, second. Pretty big fall off after that. Trey Jones, Keldon Johnson, Anthony Edwards. Then Killian Hayes, Miles Turner, Sadiq Bey, Zach Levine, and Buddy Heald. We get out of here at the exact moment that my computer switches over from dark mode to light mode. Guys, it's been swell. Fun to be here. Good show. Great week of games. Uh, you'll get me no strategy show for me on Friday, as usual. But Contenders videos will be out once I get back from the gym. And then uh, myself and Adam share on the deeper dive tonight, 5 to 6. Closing it out strong. Love it, guys. Love it. Thank you for being here. Good luck to you guys. Enjoy your weekend. Have some fun. Be safe. Good luck on this Friday the 13th, everybody. This was The Process.